Hi, I'm James Wahlberg, and I'm going to tell you how to use an ionic compound's molar solubility to find the KSP, or the solubility product constant, for that compound. You ready? Let's go. To start with the molar solubility for an ionic species and calculate the KSP, let's first write the equilibrium expression for that species. I've just got some generic compound here, let's call it AB, and that dissolves to give us A plus and B minus. The KSP expression would look like this then. It's the concentration of A plus times the concentration of B minus, both in moles per liter. If you remember that molar solubility is the number of moles of an ionic compound, AB in this case, that goes into solution when that solution is saturated, we can use X to stand for that molar solubility. So X is the number of moles of AB that goes into solution at equilibrium. But looking at the stoichiometry of this expression, you can see that for every mole of AB that dissolves, we're going to get one mole of A. And we're going to get one mole of B minus. That's just what the stoichiometry says. It's one to one. If we plug those values into our KSP expression, we'll just move them down there from the equilibrium down to the KSP, what you can see is that the KSP is equal to x squared. But recalling that x is the molar solubility, that means that the KSP is molar solubility squared in this case. Not so bad. All right, let's take this generic idea and let's look at a specific example. So here's calcium carbonate, and here we have its molar solubility at 6.9 times 10 to the minus fifth molar. So we'll start by writing our equilibrium expression, there it is, and our KSP expression. Again, we'll let X stand for the molar solubility of calcium carbonate, but the stoichiometry of this equilibrium expression tells us again that for every mole of calcium carbonate that goes into solution, we get one mole of calcium and one mole of carbonate. So we'll make the same move. We'll take those values and plug them into our KSP expression. KSP will equal molar solubility squared, which in this case is 6.9 times 10 to the minus fifth squared, or carrying out that arithmetic, gives us a KSP value of 4.8 times 10 to the minus ninth. All right, let's take a look at one more example. And this one's a little more complicated but I think it's going to be worthwhile because it'll show you how we can take this general idea and apply it to any solution equilibrium you might come across. All right, so here we have barium fluoride molar solubility 1.8 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. We'll start out with our first basic two steps. We'll write that equilibrium expression and we'll write the KSP expression. But there's a little wrinkle in this one. Notice that the fluorine has twice as many ions in solution as there are barium ions, and that's just because of the stoichiometry of the compound. But the impact that that's going to have on us is that if we have X standing for, again, the molar solubility, for every mole of barium fluoride that dissolves, we're going to get the same number of moles of barium, but we're going to get twice as many moles of fluorine. That's just the stoichiometry. The other impact that this is going to have is on the KSP expression. So notice in the KSP expression, we have the concentration of barium times the concentration of fluorine, but that concentration of fluorine is squared. Because remember, whenever you write a KSP expression, you always write as an exponent the stoichiometric coefficient of that species. So in the equilibrium expression, barium has a coefficient of 1, so the KSP expression has a, an exponent of 1. We just don't write it because it's just multiplied by itself one time. But the fluorine has an exponent of 2 because fluorine in the equilibrium expression has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2. So that's the wrinkle here. And look how this plays out. So if we now substitute these values into our KSP expression, we're going to put x in for the barium concentration but we're going to have to put 2x in for the fluorine concentration. Since the fluorine concentration gets squared in the KSP expression, 
that means that that's going to turn into 4x squared in that term. Collecting all of our terms together, we can see that the KSP equals 4x cubed. Now, if we take the specific value of molar solubility in this case and substitute it for x, we just have to carry out that arithmetic. And here's how it looks. So there's 4 times the cube of the molar solubility. So make that calculation, and we find that the KSP equals 2.3 times 10 to the minus fifth. So again, a slightly more complicated example, but I hope you can see that this method will let you calculate the KSP for any ionic species as long as you have its molar solubility. It's really not too bad. So I hope to see you in the next video when we will talk a bit more about the relationship between molar solubility and KSP.